Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we are going to do the thing that I'm most dreading to do, which is try to land a Kerbal on Mars. We are going to use this pod right here, which is the Ares Pod G, based on the Luna Pod G. And, well, we've sort of tested the basic concept and its balance on the moon. We know it's not perfectly balanced, but it's a whole lot better balanced than uh, what we had previously. We've iterated the design a few times, made sure it's not the, the most tippy thing, if you will. But that doesn't make, mean it's immune to tipping over. Heck, the base that I tried to land was rather squat and should have been resistant to tipping over, but it still tipped over. So, yeah, worried about that. Worried about many things. We have a trick here in that we have to make sure that we slow down enough for the parachutes. We need to obviously set down safely. And in doing so, we have to reserve enough fuel to get back to orbit. Right? It's not sufficient just to land. Unlike with the base, which didn't work out perfectly anyway, um, we don't just simply have to land. We have to be able to get back to orbit again. And so we need that fuel. So it's a complicated matter. And... Um, I'm going to set the parameters ahead of time for what sort of quick saving and quick loading is allowed. If it's just a pilot error, meaning, you know, I derped uh, right now, I derped right now rather than in the design phase, uh, then I'll probably uh, quick load. But if it's some sort of design flaw, like it's just going to be tipping over no matter what I do, um, Philippe, who we are going to send to the surface and is actually named after Harvester the creator of KSP, um, <laughs> so a little bit of extra pressure there, um, Philippe will perish if, uh, if it turns out that this is just a design flaw that I can't avoid, and that'll be a lesson to all of us. Uh, Philippe will only be the second Kerbal to perish in this save, and the first was of course Jeb trying to pilot a plane, sort of a Yuri Gagarin style failure if you think about it. Anyway, um, we are going to transfer Philippe over to the Lunapod, not Lunapod, Aries Pod, and we will begin our descent, make sure there's only one person there. It worries me a little bit that there's no ablator on the pod, but it did successfully capture into orbit around Mars, so that shouldn't be a problem. Sometimes when you remove the ablator from a pod, uh, it suddenly decides to blow up randomly but I don't think that'll be the case this time. Okay, so... Well, we're nearing Apoapsis, and we will begin operations. So, uh, well, let's check the fuel. That's all full. That's all full. Okay. And uh, we will want to drain from the top tank first. So, I'll unlock that. And that's because of balance reasons we want our center of mass as low as possible. Okay, trying to be very deliberate about this. I suppose we should check what we have as far as total delta V here. And how much we really should unlock. So that's that, and then we have some down here. You can see that we need to get rid of the heat shield before we can use the engines, so that's a little bit of a trouble. Okay, so... I'm missing... ah, there we go. 4,719. And I would expect that we need 4,200 to get back to orbit. So, we can leave unlocked 500 let's say so the locked fuel will be required to return to orbit so that's what we've got to work with we are 17 tons this is a 4 meter heat shield so yes the heat shield loading is high The first thing we're going to do, though, is do some aero braking passes to bring our orbit down. We're pretty high up here. And so we're just going to dip slightly into the atmosphere to bring our orbit down. 
and also we want to make sure that we get close to our pre-existing base here and obviously right now we're not at the right time for that and we need to figure out the timing for that properly we do have a mild reaction wheel on here so I'm gonna turn off RCS and test out how quickly it can turn perhaps I should just point prograde we're closer to it well it doesn't look like it can turn very much at all but I'm sure it'll be a marginal help for the time being while we're on our way we should extend the solar panels fully our electric charge is really low I should have filled it up before leaving 14 days is not much time I realize that now and we are not recharging I don't suppose we can toggle power on this we haven't even activated a CO2 scrubber well there's no way this will hold out for the necessary amount of time we're gonna have to dock back right now and I guess that's because of the extra electric charge required by the Kerbal for life support I guess that's what uh, the additional burden is if I could slap on some batteries on here that'd be great I mean that would be a start anyway I do have a potential plan so what I'm figuring is actually using the little lander, the light lander, and what fuel we can put into it. To tug this on down. Okay, well we're back on. First thing we need to do is let's transfer some electric charge over. Meanwhile, let's see what fuel the station has it has quite a lot so let's fill up the light lander light lander does have its own power requirements but hopefully those will be low enough I think it was fine it'll also be useful to have it down there at a low orbit so that the Aries pod G when it gets to orbit it'll be getting into a low orbit first can tug can be tugged by the light lander up to the station again if there's enough delta V in the light lander to do all that of course its solar panels are pretty small so I don't know if it's gonna provide enough juice at all on the right side it'll also provide more life support and it's got the Agena core so we don't need to have a Kerbal inside in order to control it speaking of which we need to transfer Newcast out it will have more electric charge available though so that's good the problem is each of these vessels is I mean apparently except for the Aries Pod G is electrically balanced if their solar panels are out but they don't all have all their solar panels out so that's sort of a let's extend this one well the best way to make the station electrically balanced is probably to remove the Aries Pod G from it now okay well let's try it let me temporarily lock this fuel again oh yeah well that does have a reaction wheel so that'll be fine for now and sun up let's see if it can recharge even though the heat shield might be in partially in the way of the soil panels because we want the light lander to rendezvous with it back over here we are definitely recharging now that's quite a power burden the Aries Podgy and RCS backing away on its own it's got 2000 meters per second but it's not gonna have that trying to push around the Aries G if that becomes necessary let's see its charge situation on its own it needs to at least be able to get minus 
if we're going to have it recharge the Ares Pod G. It doesn't look like it's going to be able to do that. Well, I sure didn't expect to face a problem this early on. But we did know that we had various power problems, though actually uh, the most severe power problem was with the other light lander, which only had one solar panel because of a symmetry issue. Of course, even if we could use KES to do something, it occurs to me that neither of our crew members are actually engineers. They're both pilots. Okay, they are connected. Our power situation is not great, but let's reverse it uh, so that the solar panels aren't being covered by the heat shield and see what happens then. So, turning around. Our total electric charge at least is a lot better. I don't know how much time that gives us, let me calculate. Maybe I should estimate one, a draw of one per second. We've got 80,000. Well, it's 22.2 uh, hours. So, not a whole lot of time. Our orbital period is 4 hours though. So it's conceivable. But then on the on the lander itself, we will only have, assuming a draw of one per second, we will have um, four hours. I'm pretty sure the Agena goes into low power mode, but we'll see. Let's uh, pin that up here. So when we time warp, we'll see whether it goes into low power mode or not. And of course, I'll have persistent rotation hold our sun orientation once we've gotten to the right orientation. I still think we can do a mild error breaking pass. We'll keep it very mild, even though we're a very unwieldy sort of assemblage. Our center of mass is still down here. If we take a look at the center of the camera, it's right around here-ish. And we will be passing through the atmosphere high enough so that even if we topple over, we're not going to incur a whole lot of heating. It's interesting with the oh uh, it had a really bad uh, charge situation and then suddenly better but not a whole lot better right now. It seemed better with the heat shield side down. And let's check out if the Gina powers down during time warp. Um, well, we're 10x, so it's halfway powered down. Uh, uh, yeah, it powers down to 10 watts, so that's good. Alright, well, I'm going to Alt F5 here. Mm, before arrow break. We are just a stone's throw away from the station. Should we want to redock these? They could redock. But, as I said, if it's an engineering flaw, and Lacking enough power is an engineering flaw. I think uh, we're just going to proceed and if things go badly, we will learn our lesson. It looks like they have 800 meters per second to work with, with the uh, Ares Pod G in tow. Given our power situation, I'm not going to attempt to land at the base. I think uh, the time it'll take to try and make sure that we actually can do that will drain our batteries. So I'm just going to try and land in daylight would be a good option and it seems like right now if we pass over here that be where we land. I don't know if this is the flattest area. There's some... well I mean we're not going to be landing on this pass anyway. It'll be the next pass. We'll see. But I'm going to bring it in at 70 kilometers right now. This may not get us particularly low, we'll see. May lead us to crash, for all I know. That's another possibility. But I doubt that. There's a huge heat shield loading. Yeah, we're not gonna be brought down too much. We'll use some of the light lander's fuel in order to bring us into a lower orbit after we pass through the atmosphere. 
we're not oriented properly to do it right now. But at least there haven't been any weird shenanigans, weird overheating or flippiness. So could we go through again? Probably. We'll still have enough electric charge to do that. We started out with 80,000. We lost like 4,000 on that pass. We have recharge. We're nearing apoapsis. I will want to bring our periapsis down if possible. We can go to 65 kilometers safely, I'm sure. We do have to make sure we have enough electric charge to get back, but the light lander will be recharging during that time, so it should be fully charged up. So after we do separate from the light lander and begin our final descent, we will want to think about... Wait, we're not that far away from Mars Base 1, actually. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe on the next pass it'll still be around. Maybe on the next pass it won't. It'll be too far away. Depends on our orbital period after this. Probably it'll be too far away. This would have been a good time to land at it, I think. Uh, if we take a look, our periapsis is right above it. That's just pure luck. <laughs> it's just. But uh, no, I mean uh, we would still be going long in this case. And on the next orbit, we'll probably be going short. Yeah, I have to think about whether I want to keep the heat shield or not. It might cause complications because we can't use the engines with the heat shield still attached. Well, even 65 didn't really bring us down too much. A little pause there. Um, probably we'll end up at a three hour orbit. But that's that. We will have to land now. Technically, this is actually sort of wrong because the Gemini pods only had uh, fuel cells capable of generating two kilowatts, which means that, and that was with the people in. So if it has a power drain of three kilowatts, because I guess the Kerbal counts as extra, that's more drain than it should have, and more drain than the Gemini, uh, the real Gemini capsules could allow with their um, fuel cells. Uh, this unit only takes 200 watts, and this one uh, 250 when it's not time warping. So they're not the cause of it. That's an extra kilowatt that this pod should not have as drain. So not too happy with that. That extra kilowatt is killing us. Call this after error breaking. Uh, where is the fuel that it's uh, using right now? Um, oh, this tank is unlocked. Well, that's actually fine. So we're backing away and we're also reducing our periapsis, so that's good. It's got a drain of 1.5 right now. It's very touchy, I mean, it should really only have a drain, yeah, now it's 0.6, but it's like any given time it decides to have more electric charge drain, that's not helpful. That's 40 kilometers, and thereabouts. And we'll go in configured with the heat shield, uh, pressing regular old F5, just above lowlands. I like the sound of lowlands, makes it sound flat, but there's Mount Olympus right there, so I don't know how low it is, but okay. Um, yeah, we're definitely far, far away from Mars Base 1 now, but we're landing around here-ish, north of Mount Olympus. We'll see how that works out for us. And the only reason that we have the heat shield is to produce more drag. Train altitude does not seem that high. About seven kilometers. Oh, no, uh, six kilometers. Okay, well, out of time warp. We're still going pretty fast. I don't know if, like, having a lifting re-entry or something like that would help. 
Can I actually increase my vertical speed like this? Well, probably the parachutes are just going to snap. But we'll see. I can't use the engines right now because of the heat shield and I can't release the heat shield because it'll just smack right into us. Well, something blew up. Hold on. A procedural tank failed due to aerodynamic stresses. Really? Whoop. Um, that tank separated from us. Because of aerodynamic stress, it says. I didn't see that one coming. Ah, uh, snap, snap. Okay, well, hold on. Uh, retrograde. Gear. Lopsided. Full parachute deployment's too late. Well, I'll give it one more go, and this time we'll do it without the heat shield. But I'm guessing that it's just gonna be a case where Philippe's gonna die. Let's let's try it again. It occurs to me that we should have boosted the light lander up to a higher orbit first. It's passing through the atmosphere again, though not at a very uh, high level. Um, I mean, low level. It was. Uh, it'll be passing through at 65 kilometers, which shouldn't bring it down. Okay. Well, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to uh, toss off the heat shield so that we have a chance to use the engines ahead of time. That's good enough. I'll pre-ignite the engines as well. Okay. Probably those little tanks at the bottom will all blow up. Okay, no, I definitely want to pitch up, if anything. I doubt I can do it for very long, but it'll help a bit. We're actually getting some heat effects. Well, there's certainly a different dynamic than with the heat shield, that's for sure. Well, I might have to use some engine power just to keep us from going out of the atmosphere. Well, that's already a lot of delta be used for that purpose. I don't think extending the landing legs is a good idea. They'll probably snap off due to aerodynamic stress or something. Hopefully this situation with us basically going up will allow us to slow down enough for the parachutes, I don't know. Maybe I should unlock the rest of the fuel and in a pinch we'll just strand. We'll, we'll keep the bottom fuel locked. But Felipe will have to, or Felipe will have to prepare to be stranded on Mars. It may happen. Okay, we're headed down. We're not particularly slowing down. So the main chute's at 5,000. 8,000 for the drogue shoots. 
23 kilometers. We're sure going fast. Well, I'm just gonna start retroing now. Fifteen kilometers above the terrain. Fourteen. Thirteen. The drogue shoots deploy at eight. Twelve. Eleven. Ten. Nine. Eight. Reaching crew limit, but they, they held, they held. Uh, let's put the landing gear down. Well, they were reading red, so that's sort of impressive. Uh, we've still got the mains armed, but we're at a good velocity, but I don't know if we're going to have enough Delta V to get back to orbit. So, yeah. Well, let me just focus on landing first, because that's got to be tough enough for me to do properly anyway. The mains are out. It doesn't look like the smoothest terrain. And we've only got half our electric charge left. Okay, full parachute deployment. And let's start slowing down. Uh, okay, but well, the victor is going away from us. Okay, okay, no, don't do anything stupid. Okay, okay, we've set down, we're sort of skidding. Well, uh, suspense we should get rid of first. We actually kept all the tanks this time, I don't know about that aerodynamic thing with Jiggy. 3,563. Well, I don't think that's enough to make orbit, really. Because we're also fighting against some gravity. We're sort of skidding over here. I'm going to let it stop skidding before doing anything else. I thought I had put a uh, ladder on here. Dang it. We needed a ladder, too. Well, um, it should be fine to extend solar panels, right? Right? It's not going to hit the terrain or anything. I need to give myself some time to think. Yeah, it does not look like uh, we've got a ladder, so our Kerbal can't come out. I'm pretty sure I... Well, I guess that wasn't this version. The Lunapod was definitely supposed to have land, uh, a ladder, but... Okay, um, well, let's crew report. Um, it shouldn't take too much power. Transmit. Okay. Uh, I just saw something happen over here, but okay. Oh, because the antenna had to extend out. EVA. V report. While flying at Mars. I like it. Keep. Forward. Transmit. Okay, we've stopped moving. Let's see, how about the rest of the science? Atmospheric pressure. We haven't been to Mars Midlands yet. Radiation data. Perturbation data. All good. Of course, I'm taking up electric charge. I realize this. Temperature. That one. Collect impact data or record seismic data. Well, okay. 
it'll be recording impact data but okay now what can we do <laughs> uh, there's there's no way that Philippe could just take stuff off I, well, I'm thinking about the Martian here you know that just grabs stuff off of the thing to uh, kill weight we could take off the antennae for instance there's no need for antennae uh, we could uh, we could actually move the fuel out of these round ones and dump the round ones you know stuff like that well honestly I think I can leave it as a point of suspense will we get Philippe back to orbit um, and I'll, I'll let you guys propose different possible solutions for landing this safely with enough Delta V as well. We have created some saves. Uh, it can land, it's just not very good at it. It does have the flaw of the electric charge issue which limits our ability to slow down ahead of time which would have made it a little bit better. If we could have uh, aerobraked to a much lower orbit initially we would have had an easier time. It wouldn't have been an easy situation anyway. but easier so yeah I'll, I, I think we'll leave it as a point of suspense and think about it as our electric charge is very quickly draining and uh, I'll hear your thoughts at this point and we will discover the fate of Philippe in the next episode so on that note thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time